Hey there, Sarah with Elite Real Estate. Today I'm gonna to be going through from start to finish purchasing a property. Now I'm not gonna break down into great detail in the different areas along the way. They'll have their own individual videos explaining them in great detail. Um, so keep an eye out for those. But I'm just gonna go start to finish, the steps that are involved, what you need to do and that sort of stuff. Now, you might be wondering what's going on behind me. So I'm in my new office, well, what's gonna be my new office. So everything has been prepared for the plasterer to come in. He's gonna be here this afternoon and start plastering, so I am super excited. Okay, back to it. So you are ready to buy a house. Step one is you need to get pre-approved. There is not much point in looking at properties until you are pre-approved because houses are selling so fast. You could go and see a house, you really love it, you wanna start the process, you have to get pre-approved. By the time you get that done, the property's sold. So get pre-approved first. Second is you want to find an agent that you are gonna work well with. You could have this agent-client relationship for two months, you could have it for six months. I have clients that I've been working with for a couple of years. So you need to make sure that your relationship clicks because this person is helping you with one of the biggest financial purchases in your life. If they don't click, then find another agent because it will be a lot easier for everybody involved if it is a good, healthy relationship with your agent. Okay, next step. You meet with, well, you've met with your agent. You go over what you want in a property. Remember there's gonna be a few different columns. There's gonna be the dream items that you would absolutely love to have in the property. Then there's gonna be the things that you must have in a property, like you must have three bedrooms, you must have the master on the main floor, you must have two and a half baths, the musts. Then there's gonna be the things that, oh, it would be nice if it had this, but it's not gonna turn me off a property if it doesn't have it. So there's usually those three columns that you work out what it is. And then of course there's the area. If there's a school zone you need to be in or nearby, you wanna be by work or the train station, whatever it happens to be, take that into account as well. And make sure your agent understands that you know you have these ideas of what it is that you're looking for and then they can make sure that you get to see all of the properties that suit your requirements. So next step is you go and start viewing houses, which is so much fun. So you go and view properties. Your agent will probably send you a couple of houses every day, depending on how many are coming on. And you need to say, yes, I want to see this one or no, or you know that sort of thing. You don't want to just go and view every house if you know it's not going to be suitable, or you know you don't like that neighborhood or whatever the reason is. Don't waste your time and don't waste your agent's time. Only go to properties that you know you think could really work for you. So you go and view properties, you find one that you love and you want to put an offer in. You sit down with your agent and you work out what the contract terms are, the price, the timeline, all of that sort of stuff, how much earnest money you want to put down, and then they submit the contract to the seller. Now sometimes a property can be listed and be under contract within 24 hours. Sometimes it's not under contract until the after the first weekend of showings, then they start taking offers and close it off at about 5 p.m. on Monday. Your agent will know when offers are closing and when they need to get them in by. Okay, so after you submit your offer, you have typically three options. You get accepted, you don't get accepted, or you get counter-offered, where, uh, where the seller sends back another offer that is either more, change the terms, or whatever it happens to be. Now, in today's market, generally there are no counter-offers. Your first offer, typically should be your highest and best offer with the best terms because a lot of times sellers are getting in multiple offers, they don't want to have to counter back several offers and go from there. So at the moment, submit your highest and best offer possible. So out of those options, you get accepted. Your bid, your offer is the winning offer. So then after that, you move on to the next steps. If you don't get the property, then you go back to looking at properties and start the process again. So once your offer's been accepted, you have a few days to get in your earnest money. That needs to usually be uh, taken to the title company or to whoever it is that's listed on the contract that is holding the earnest money. 
they have a special account that it goes in. So you need to get your earnest money, that's the first step. Then you start your due diligence. So the first thing is getting home inspection done. So there are many different types of inspections you can get done and you can do them all if you want and depending on the age of the house and location, you know it's worth getting a few extra ones in there. But generally you get the home inspector out, he spends a few hours going through the entire house, upstairs, downstairs, in the attic, in the basement, checking out all sorts of stuff, making sure everything's working, and then he gives you the report. It usually takes 24, 48 hours maximum to have that turnaround done, where you get the report and you work out, okay, nothing needs to be done, the house is in perfect condition, move on to the next step. Or there could be a few red flags in there that you want to address with the seller, and ask for a reduction of price or for those things to be fixed. But we'll go into those in a separate video as to how that process works. So after the inspection is done and everything is good, you have the appraisal done. The appraisal is ordered by the company that you are getting the mortgage through, so the mortgage broker will contact them, then they will send out an appraiser. The appraiser, now this again in its own video, it does a huge amount of uh, inspections, he checks out all of the neighborhood comps, what's going on in the area, and then he comes back with a price. Now this is the price that the bank will loan up to, minus your deposit, all those other fun bits and pieces. So if your offer is more than that appraised amount, you've got to come up with that difference. The bank will not loan that to you, so that is the cash out of pocket for you. But we'll go into more detail about that in another video because it is happening all the time at the moment in this current market. But the appraisal's done, the bank says yes, you are good to go. Usually a few days, a week after that is when you're clear to close. And you go in with your realtor and you sign the documents for purchasing the property. So there's a huge amount of paper to go through. If you have any questions, make sure you ask them there because once you've signed it, that's done. Okay, so you've signed the documents, Funds have been paid to the seller, everything has happened magically behind the scenes and depending on when you take possession of the property, sometimes it's day of signing, sometimes it's within 24 hours, 72 hours, or it could be a week or months depending on what's in your contract and what you agreed to back then. So once that's done and everything is all into place, your agent will pick up the keys and then you are clear to move into the property. I hope this has helped. If you have any questions about specific things or what have you, please reach out. I know as an agent, a lot of times we tend to brush over things and go through and don't realize we need to explain a lot more because sometimes we're dealing with a first time home buyer. Sometimes this person hasn't bought or sold a house in 20 years and things have changed. I mean, things are changing all the time. New paperwork is coming in for us real estate agents to add into our purchase contract. There's just changes happening all the time. So any questions, make sure you speak to your realtor, get a defined answer. If you just remember, this is the biggest or one of the biggest purchases of your life. So if you have questions, you deserve answers. So don't take no for an answer. That is not a valid answer. Get the answers because you need to be comfortable throughout the entire process or else it's just going to stress you out. So I hope this has helped. Please reach out questions that you'd like me to answer in a longer video. Obviously I'm going to go through earnest money, I'm going to go through appraisal, I'm going to go through what, you know, what kind of inspections you can get done, what you should get done, what you should look for when you're walking around a house for the first time just as a, as a buyer. What things should you look out for and that sort of fun stuff so take care stay safe and i will catch you guys on the next video bye